Hope Channel, Changing Lives. So imagine that I ask you, what would you consider as the main problem of our world today? Imagine that I'm able to invent a very huge diagnostic machine. I'm talking about the kind of machine that you can squeeze our whole world and then pass it through this machine to detect the main problem with our world. What do you think the machine will tell us the problem with our world is? Is it a problem of leadership? Is it a problem of poverty? Is it a problem of insanity? Is it a problem of health? In fact, is it a problem of illiteracy? What do you think the problem of our world is? Now, it will interest you to know that all of these issues we talk about can actually be summarized into one single problem. And it's a problem of sin. Yes, it's sin. And today we want to look at what sin is. We have been looking at the fall of man. We entered into the Garden of Eden from the past three weeks ago. And we have been looking at the temptation and then the fall. Now we are told that the woman was deceived by the serpent and then they sinned against God. But what is this act of sin? So today on Hope Bible School, we are going to digest and know what sin really is. Does the Bible express it in a way that we can really understand? Welcome to Hope Bible School. Here we study the Bible to understand what it means. And as always, I'm glad that you joined us. Invite your friends to also join us. You can share on um, your social media um, channels so that they can watch. On Facebook, we are Hope TV Ghana. On YouTube, we are Hope channel Ghana. So you can share, start a watch party so that others will also uh, watch. Now I want to talk to you about Hope Club 1000. We are always hinging on it because we need you to, to actually support the channel so we can stay alive. So you can al always watch your favorite Bible study. We will grow and grow. This is our prayer and we trust that it shall be our experience for we pray in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Ohine. And I'm glad that by this time you have shared the program on your um, social media handles for others to also watch. And I'm really encouraged by the messages that you share with me, especially the ones that you personally sent to me. It's really encouraging. So let it come through. And those of you who would also want to share it for others to hear about the testimonies, how this program is impacting your lives, you can still share uh, with us via um, the number 055968000. Six, six. That is the WhatsApp number that you can share. And today, if there is any question, contribution that you want to share with us, you can share via the same number and it will reach us. It will be read. We are discussing sin and we want to know what sin is. Is. And so if you have any idea based on the Bible, based on reason, based on logic, you can share with us. We all want to understand. And we will be, I mean, tethering this discussion to the fall of man, okay, to the fall of humanity. So I want to ask the class, even as I ask you to, what is sin? What do you consider a sin? Yes. Uh -huh. Let me go to Phil. I would like to talk about the sin Adam and Eve committed in the garden. In the Hebrew language, it's called hatat, hatat. Okay. And this, it means that missing the mark. Hmm. And we, we, we saw that definition in how the devil deceived them, telling them they will be more like God. So with the intention of gaining something, they decided to disobey it mm. and they missed the mark. Okay. So, so Phil wants to define sin as missing the mark. Uh, talking about missing the mark, what mark did they miss in the Garden of Aden? Can you share with us whatever definition we give it? We want, it, I mean, we want to tether it to our discussions thus far from the previous weeks. In the Garden of Eden, what mark did they miss? 
Yes, Fio, if you want to follow up. After they've disobeyed, they realized they were naked. So the mark is the glory of God which departed away from them. Okay, it is very interesting. Now, um, um, Phil, it will interest you to know that this word, hitat, okay, in its noun form, appears about two, 293 times in the Old Testament. Hitat, in the Old Testament, it appears, and th that is the largest of all the other synonyms you can have for sin. And as you, 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 you rightly said, it's about missing the mark or missing the target. So that like a way as so someone will have so what you call target pr pr practice. You see, sometimes someone, they would have this, um, I don't know the name, it's like a, a dart. Okay, a dart, and then they will throw it, and there's a particular point that they want the dart to hit. So if you're able to get that angle, it means you're on point. But anywhere else be, be beyond this one uh, mimics you miss the mark, you understand? And it's very interesting that, um, for instance, when you look at Judges chapter 20, verse 16, let's, let's read that one. Judges chapter 20, verse 16. From Joshua, you go to Judges. Yes. Chapter 20, verse 16, yes. Among all these people were seven, 700 select men mm -hmm. who were left-handed. Mm -hmm. Everyone could sling a stone at a head. And I don't know why that was the case. I don't know if it has anything to do with the, the fact that God saves with the righteous right hand. So the left-handed not supposed to wield their sword or something like that. But they were able to always hit their target without missing. Because you see, in a, in, in a war zone, what you need to understand is that you only kill those who God have actually instructed you to kill. It means you can't kill your neighbor. So imagine that there is a fierce battle. Those who are wielding the sword are the ones on the battlefield trying to fight with the enemy. And those archers are also somewhere, maybe on a mountaintop. So they need to be able to hit get, uh, uh, I mean, a, a non-Israelite. So kill your own uh, brother. I, 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 I hope you get the point. So sin here uh, talks about hitting your target and not missing the mark. Now, the theological use of the word also underscores an act, a way or a fence, a hedge, just like in the garden. He told them all of this you can eat, but this one, so the, the moment he, 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 he placed uh, that one in isolation, it's like there is an unseen hedge around it, which they were not supposed to cross, okay? Which they were not supposed to cross. Now, we are still looking at what sin is, and Phil has actually given us one definition from the Hebrew word hitat. Hitat. Now, it will interest you to know that it has a sibling in the New Testament. In fact, all the, 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 the definitions in the Old Testament, you find them in the New Testament as well. And the sibling in the New Testament appears 175 times, and it also appears most than the other ways used in the New um, Testament. It also means missing the man, the New Testament. Matthew chapter 1, verse 20. Yes, Regina. And she will bring he will save his people who have missed the mark. So it can read that way, looking at that same Greek where that is being used. So first John one verse nine. It says, Whosoever is born of God mm -hmm. does not commit sin, mm -hmm. for his seed remain in him. Mm -hmm. And he cannot sin mm -hmm. because he is born of God. Mm -hmm. so, so you see, it, it can also read that whoever is born of God does not miss the mark because his seed is in him and so he cannot miss the mark. So that if the seed of Christ is in you, Okay, and having in mind the graphical picture of the, the, the archers, those who wield the bow and the arrow, it is so much ingrained in them that even if they shut their eyes closed, they can still hit their target because the word is they cannot. So whether they are asleep, the moment they wake up, they can still hit their target, you understand? So that is how we were supposed to um, 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 live our lives. Do you have another definition for 
sin. Yes, let me go to Regina. Um, if you look at First John chapter three verse four, uh -huh. whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, uh -huh. and sin is lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. lawlessness. Okay, so that is her <laughs> the definition. Now I want us to focus on the word lawless. What that, that, that does it mean? That word. Does it, it mean you have less of the law? <laughs> what does it actually mean to be a lawless person? Yes. It means a state in which there is widespread wrongdoing and disregard for rules and authority. Okay, widespread wrongdoing, wrongdoing. Okay. and disregard for rules and authority. Okay, disregard for rules and authority. So it means that the law is there, you know it, but you decide to go against it. And actually, the Hebrew word is a one. A one. And this is a deeply religious term. It occurs 229 times next to hitat. The other mostly used word, lawless, okay, is a one. And it's actually rendered, the translation is actually rendered in the Hebrew mind, most of the time when God himself was speaking, he either used the word law lawless, which is actually the, the Greek, okay, but he used the iniquity. That one, it is another level of sin. Okay, he thought you have missed the mark. Maybe you tried and then you failed. But for, um, for, 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 for this one, lawless iniquity, it is another level. That's why sometimes God will say, your iniquity have reached me. I am angered by your iniquity. That one is a whole different level. Let's look at Genesis chapter 4, verse 13. We are still trying to explain what lawless is. Genesis chapter 4, verse 13. And someone can also ready for us Lamentations chapter 3, verse 9. Who has Genesis 4, 13? Okay, Prince. And Cain said unto the Lord, uh -huh. My punishment is greater than I can bear. Uh -huh. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day uh -huh. from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid. Uh -huh. And I shall be a fugitive and vagabond in the earth, mm -hmm. and it shall come to pass. Now, you see, Prince, the idea here is that this is a kind of sin that is so heinous that you don't even wait till hell to receive the reward. Okay? You, you don't wait till hell to receive your reward. It is like, think about the kind of sin that you pay for it right here. Okay, it, it, it is either you, you, you actually destroy your, 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 your body, your system. Okay, how you either destroy your body or your system. I don't know if you have examples of such sins. There are some, some, some sins you do, okay, for, for instance, for instance, you can insult someone. That, 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 that doesn't have a physical effect on you. Huh. But what kind of sins can you mention that would have a physical effect on you? Yes. Uh huh. Um, Finley. Fornication, right? Yes. It is a classic example. Fornication, because either you actually contract some STDs, sexually transmitted diseases, and, and, and all of that, you understand. Uh -huh. So it, it is a, the kind of sin that you receive your punishment in yourself. And the Greek um, form of this particular sin is enomai. Enomai. And that appears 14 times. Okay, now this one suggests contempt or violation of the law of God. It is also translated iniquity. Now, let's take a few examples. Matthew chapter 7, verse 23. Matthew chapter 7, verse 23. Matthew chapter 7 verse 23 and I would want you to have at the back of your mind I mean last week okay when we were um, d d discussing the lies we were looking at the false uh, pro uh, prophets who were deceiving people now this is also linked to it chapter 7 verse 23 yes and then I will declare to them 
I never knew you. Mm -hmm. Depart from me. Mm -hmm. You who practice lawlessness. You who practice lawlessness. lawlessness. Now, I want us to look at a seeming um, difference between the Hittat and then the Anomai. And you see, um, when you talk about missing the mark, sometimes it can be more of a one-time thing. It's a mistake you, you, you did, okay? Huh. But then the way he phrased this one, you who practice lawlessness the idea of practicing means it is what habitual constant something that you do it has been moved from just an an action from an action to an attitude from an attitude to a character so you have now developed it as who you are you understand <laughs> do we still have more definitions for sin yes let me go to finley Finley, yes. We are trying to understand what sin is. We have said it is missing the mark or missing the target. We are now saying it is lawlessness, iniquity. Yes. Let's look at James chapter 4, verse 17. Okay, James 4, verse 17. It says, Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good mm -hmm. and doeth it not, to him it is a sin. Okay, so he who knows to do but fails to do it is a sin to the person i think that we used to say that he who knows not and knows not that he knows not is a fool but this one the person knows right okay the person actually knows that this is what i am supposed to do and it is interesting that you find it in the old testament it is actually the third level that that one you see from missing the mark you go to iniquity then from iniquity you go to pesah that is the hebrew word pesah and its greek uh, sibling is parabasis parabasis now this word pesah appears 135 times in the old testament and it signifies a deliberate premeditated willful violation of the norm or standard so this one it is not more like an error it's not what you can call an oversight or a mistake it is deliberate in fact that's what you call premeditated murder so that it is different from when someone is uh, driving on the street at night and maybe another car blinds it with a highlight Okay, and then there's someone crossing, and then the person runs the person uh, uh, over. That one is not intentional. That's what you can call an accident. But then when you see the person standing there, and you drive into the person, that is pre you have thought about it, you have planned it. I, I mean, by this time, I want us to go into the Bible. Do you have examples of people who actually planned evil against other people? People, because we are we, we, we are looking at this kind of sin and there is a reason why we need to pay attention to this in connection with what happened in the Garden of Eden but before the Garden of Eden do you find elsewhere in the Bible where people planned evil yes Phil we saw that in the experience of David when he slept with the wife of Uriah mm. and ordered Uriah to be at the front of the battle and fight so that he would die eventually sure Sure. This is premeditated, skillfully planned, intentionally executed, so that you would find the wife, and then because of what you know you have done, you will now invite, send, I mean, him to come, to go, and then so you can actually cover up what, what you have done. And when that one does not succeed, you send a letter to be given to him, to be placed in a way where he, he would lose his life. So this is a classical example of Pesah. Do we have more? Yes. Cain and Abel. Mm -hmm. Cain killed Abel. Okay, so yeah, what makes it? Uh -huh. Okay, so he, um, Genesis chapter 4, verse 8. Mm -hmm. Now Cain talked with Abel, his brother, mm -hmm. and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. Mm. So he sent him. Um, let's go to the field today I, I want you to leave your sheep and go with me so you can learn about agriculture i i i want you to know how you sow seed how you uh, fertilize a plant and all of those things so whilst he's trying to sow the seed and from his back 
then he's gone. This premeditated. Do we have more? Because in our day, people plan, I mean, armed robbery, attacks, and all of those things. And it is not, I mean, alien to us. It is real, even in the Bible. Yes, Kwabena. So we have of Satan. So mm -hmm. he's the true definition of a villain, right? Okay. Yeah, so Satan tried to capture, capture the attention for himself, take over the world, and circumvent the plans of the hero, mm. Jesus. Okay, so, so he also planned that I'm going to put this guy on the cross. And by the time I'm done with him, all heaven will be quiet. But he had no idea that Sunday morning will come. You understand? So he also planned and executed. I, I want more of this one because for me, this one is very serious. Okay. In, in fact, in fact, it, it, it says that it also denotes a refusal to submit to rightful authority. This act is not inadvertent, not an accident, but a deliberate revolt, rebellion, and transgression. Yes. Uh, denying the rightful authority draws my mind to uh, Korah, Datan, and Abiram, okay. who mm -hmm. wanted to take the authority that God had given to Moses and Aaron in sure. Numbers chapter 16. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, and here you are talking about coup d'etat. So coup d'etat mm -hmm. is not a 20th uh, century something. It's been there. You understand? Huh? They, they wanted to resist. And you see, that's why in the New uh, Testament, was it Peter or Paul, who tells us that the government of the day is established by God and so we should submit to the powers that be. You understand? So, so we need to respect that. And talking about the fact that the word is also used to refer to a willful break of an arrangement, a willful break of an arrangement so that Ananias and Sapphira had an arrangement with the church. We all have an arrangement, an agreement. This is what we have intended to do. Then when the time is due, you will, within the confines of your privacy, break the agreement. Okay. Now, if not for the Holy Spirit's power, probably the disciples or apostles would never have known, you understand. But so, so whether you are breaking it in secret or in public, it is still sin. So that now we don't know that some, some of these things are very, I mean, you arrange a meeting with someone, meet me at the mall, meet me at the bus station. Then the time is due, you are in bed, oh, the, even this one, I will not go. Why can't you tell the person, I cannot make it? Then the person will go stand there and be waiting for you. We'll call you, not pick. The number you have dialed cannot be reached at the moment. Then the person is frustrated. You And this is serious. You have planned it. And you are executing it. In fact, let's look at Isaiah chapter 1, from verses 2 to 4. Isaiah chapter 1, verses 2 to 4. We are looking at sin. If you also have a definition or an idea of what sin is, you can share with us. Hear, O heavens, mm -hmm. and give ye, O earth, mm -hmm. for the Lord has spoken. I have nourished and brought up children. Now this is God speaking out of frustration because of the acts of his children. Uh -huh. And they have rebelled against me. Mm -hmm. The ox knows its owner, mm -hmm. and the donkey its master's crib. Mm -hmm. But Israel does not know. Mm -hmm. My people do not consider. Mm -hmm. Alas, sinful nation, mm -hmm. a people laden with iniquity, mm -hmm. a brood of evildoers, mm -hmm. children who are corrupted. Mm -hmm. They have forsaken the Lord. Mm -hmm. They have provoked to anger the Holy One of Israel. They have turned away backward. You see, this is not like the prodigal son situation. This is sternness. You, you, you are uh, very resolved in your decision to go against God so that, I mean, imagine that God would even relate it with animals, that even the animals, we call ourselves higher animals, right? But he's saying that even the higher animals give regard to their parents, but we do not regard him as Lord, and we are rebelling against him. No matter what he does, for in fact, in verse 2, he says, I have nourished and brought you up children, and they have rebelled against me. So th this is the kind of rebellion that God is talking about here. In fact, you go to Hebrews chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4, and it also gives us a very classic description of what this kind of sin is. Is rebellion. 
Hebrews chapter 2, 1 to 4. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, mm -hmm. lest we drift away. Verse 2. For if the word spoken through angels provokes death fast, and every transgression and disobedience revealed receive a just reward, mm -hmm. how shall we escape? escape. If we neglect so great a salvation, mm -hmm. which at the first began, which at the first began to be sp to be spoken by the Lord, mm -hmm. and was confirmed to us by those who are who heard Him, mm -hmm. verse four, God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit, according to His own will. Amen. Sure. Now in the old. Testament, God is saying, I brought you out. I took care of you, but you rebelled against me. And now he's saying that we too have seen this great salvation, imagining Christ on the cross, what he did for us, and then we are still sinning against God. So th this is premeditated because you see, um, 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 the, 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 the thing that you call me mistake Okay, the reason why I believe it's not actually a mistake, but it was premeditated. I have another reason which we will go into, God willing, next week. But I think that uh, the fact that you did it the last time you asked God to forgive you, and you believe he did, and you are doing it again, it tells me it is deliberate. I mean, it is that you did it the last time. Okay, and you regretted, you showed remorse, and you are doing it again. In fact, as I speak to you, you are still doing it. You just remembered. You understand? So it is a very deliberate action, knowing the thing that you are doing, that it is wrong, that it breaks the very heart of God. Do we have more definitions of sin? You can also share with us if you have any more definition of sin. Yes, or So him. mine is not a definition, but then when all the definitions were coming in, I was, uh, my mind was wondering. I was trying okay. to bring it all together. Mm -hmm. So we were talking about missing the mark, mm -hmm. the, the first definition, missing the mark. And upon reading certain books by Christian writers, I've, I've come to the conclusion that God created everything, and everything has laws. Mm. Now imagine the sun missed the mark. Mm. Then it means that we are all dead. Mm -hmm. Imagine the sea crosses mm -hmm. its, boundaries. its boundaries. It has missed the mark. Mm -hmm. God has set its boundaries to be here, and it misses the mark. Mm -hmm. Then we are all in trouble. Yeah. Now, what I was thinking was that God creates, God has created certain things that just can't miss the mark because mm -hmm. if those things mix the mark, then it causes pain to his other creation. Okay. But then as humans, we are the only creation on this earth who have the uh, authority and mm -hmm. the ability to miss the mark morally because mm -hmm. of the power of choice. Okay. So then if we decide to miss the mark, it, it causes some sort of an anomaly in the, in the creation of God that God wants us to go this way and we are going mm -hmm. that way and we may think that it is normal okay it is our will we are doing what we want mm. but then at the end of the day it distorts the balance which God has created mm. so for me sin as as has been defined as greater than some of us perceive it as something simple mm -hmm. i committed fornication it's simple i did okay. this it's simple but if we were to pay for the sin that we are we, we are committing and god was to be like okay i've designed the world in this way and mm -hmm. if you commit sin it affects this thing it affects that thing then i think we would all be dead um and that is where grace comes in or honey that is where the grace of god come in in fact as you were also talking i was looking at the other few definitions i have of sin the the other one in the uh, hebrew resa resa which means turbulence and restlessness okay talking about how it affects other creation of God. This appeared 30 times and it's like the tossing of the sea. Look at how when Jesus was with the disciples and they were uh, on the sea and the winds and the waves were disturbing everyone. Everyone was afraid and that is how sin is like. So that for me in my mind when the woman went near the tree 
when she saw it and she was just trying to salivate and uh, attempting to, I want to believe that all the angels were like, what? Because they knew what was going to happen to our universe. The moment she attempted taking the first bite, I'm sure by the time she took the first bite and bit into it, they were like, oh, we are doomed. You understand because they knew how sin was going to affect our entire universe. But I want us to look at another angle of our discussion. Looking at this other um, definition of sin in the Greek, parakoi. Parakoi it literally means a failure to hear or an unwillingness to hear. A failure to hear or an unwillingness to hear, the Bible calls it sin, or what you call disobedience, the opposite of obedience. So that sometimes it is not that you know um, or you have the information. For some people, because they don't want their conscience to disturb them, they would cease hearing the instruction in the first place so that they can claim the right of, I did not know. I don't know if you get the point I'm making, so that you can only accuse me. You can only say I am guilty if I know. But you see, um, if a child is oblivious to the fact that murder is a crime and he kills and is sent to the court, would they say that because he or she did not know, the person should go free? No. A sin has still been committed. The act of sin has still been committed. Yes, so, so let us not play the Acts chapter 17 verse 31 game of in the times of your ignorance. Ignorant sin is still sin. You were ignorant, but it doesn't change the action that you did. And that is why I want to believe that when the Bible says that just shall live by faith, and faith comes by hearing. It means you need to hear. So it is your responsibility to seek for the truth of God so you avoid sin. And the other one is called paraptoma. Paraptoma, that is the most interesting one. It says, a falling while one ought to be standing. It signifies a slip, a fault, and it's commonly translated trespass. Okay, it's translated to trespass. And of all the ways that we have discussed, the reason I re reserve this one for last is that there's a question for, for you. Uh, of, of all the other ones that we have, uh, I mean, um, described, this one denotes the least deliberate act. This is more of sin by accident. You, it was not intentional. It was not premeditated. It's by an accident. So you can talk about some sins in the Bible that were more of an accident. Do you have examples like that? Do you have examples like that? An accidental sin. An accidental sin. You remember the guy who ne nearly took Abraham's wife, Sarah, when he thought that Sarah was the sister because Abraham lied to so yes it was going to be sin okay but then it was it would have been an accidental sin because it was not intentional so there are accidents like that so on that note the question is are all sins equal are all sins equal C can we classify or and, and I'm talking about the degree okay the gravity do we say all sins are sins, so it's a sin. So, or do, do you think that in the eyes of God, or according to your understanding of the Bible, how or would you grade sin that maybe this is first class sin, this is second, like the way in our human, um, there is first degree uh, murder. That's why the punishment was capital punishment. Do, do we have something? like that. What, 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 what do you think? And uh, friends, I also want you to share with us, do you consider all sins as equal? Okay, so I'm receiving from our friend Emmanuel from Tamale. He says, sin is an immoral act considered to be a transgression against divine laws. And then Elder Philibert also says, sin is a, viol a violation of God's law. Yes, 
Elder, I, I would want to hear from, from you. Do, do you. do you consider all sins as equal? Yes, Ohine. So, the question in itself answers a part of the question you are asking. Okay. Do you consider all sins? At the end of the day, it's still all sins. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for instance, if I slap you, the implication of the slap, the pain you feel, may be lighter than if uh, Finley slaps you. Maybe Finley has huge hands. So if she slaps you, the pain will be more. Mm -hmm. But then at the end of the day, you still feel pain. Mm -hmm. So in one way, you can say all sins are equal. And that is before God. All sins are equal. It's a sin. At the mm -hmm. end of the day, it's so sin. Mm -hmm. If the, uh, the, the, the outcome of that sin is high, if it is low, before God, it is still sin. Mm -hmm. But then when you come to the outcome of sins, then I think they are great. There are certain sins, as we are saying earlier, where the outcome is not all that huge like that. But then there are certain sins where the outcome can just blow your head off. Okay. Uh, who, who would also want to share with us? Yes, Edward. Okay, so I would say um, first it's subjective mm -hmm. because um, I think when it comes to God, in God's viewing, mm -hmm. all sins are considered equal. But when it comes to human, um, in the eyes of man, mm -hmm. let's say you've killed someone and somebody has stolen um, two cities, mm -hmm. human thinking will just suggest to you that this person has killed someone, he has shed blood. Th this, they even say it's a great sin. Mm -hmm. But um, somebody has stolen, let's say, a uh, hundred cities, they will say, oh, his, he has sinned, but his is lighter. Mm -hmm. But um, the Bible also tells us, um, the reason why I say all sins are equal is that the Bible says that um, um, concerning the Ten Commandments, if you keep all and you fall to one, you are guilty of all. Okay. So if that, if um, it's, um, let's say, disrespecting your parent has made you fault all nine, then that means each, each, each of them um, carry the same punishment, as in they are all equal. So um, sin, before, um, sin is equal before God, but when it comes to human thinking, that's when we tend to grade them that this is higher, this is lower, and all that. Mm. So, Pastor, I want to chip in with something. Mm -hmm. So, I, I was going home one time, and uh, on the radio, they were uh, giving a news where a guy had killed himself. And mm -hmm. the reason was that he had a contract. And I think he was a, con uh, a contractor. And he had bought the materials which he was going to use for the contracts he had been given he sent it to the location. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, uh, in the night, thieves came and they stole the things. And mm -hmm. he was thinking about it. Okay. And because of that, he killed himself. Mm. Now, in human thinking, if you are looking at the, implica the implication, the first-hand implication, mm -hmm. it was just theft. Okay. And theft would be some few years in prison or maybe mm -hmm. you will go scot-free mm -hmm. but then in god's thinking where he knows the entire picture where he says it from every perspective okay the stealing led to someone losing his life. life that fornication will lead, may lead to pregnancy which may distort someone's life and the future god expects from that person mm -hmm. that insult may demoralize someone and cause that person to kill himself mm -hmm. so god is not looking at the instance and the implication from man's perspective but then from the entire perspective i think that is why to god sin is just sin okay so the wages of sin is death big sin small sin great sin less sin sin is sin so the wages of all sin is death but i think that when you come to as you are saying in the mind of god um, looking at how it affects another okay because already why do you think that if all sins are equal why would we have different names which applies to the different levels or degree of sin like we are talking about missing the mark iniquity 
I mean, transgression, lawlessness, and all of that. I think there are different levels of sin. For, for instance, if, if you read Genesis chapter 39, verse 9, where um, Joseph was running from Mrs. Potiphar, he said this, that why should I do this great sin? So the fact that he qualified the sin means that there could be a less sin and then there could be great, great sin. I mean, uh, but all of it will lead to eternal damnation. You see, the, the reason why I am actually bringing this up is that when you look at the opposite of it, righteousness, it's also the same. There are greater acts of mercy and there are little acts of mercy. So that it is the reason why Jesus said in, I think Matthew chapter 5, from verses 18 through 19, where he says that I did not come to destroy the law or the prophets, I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Then he goes on to say in verse 18, for as surely as I say to you, till heaven and earth shall pass, not one jot or title shall no means pass now. Verse 19 says, whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments, Remember, there are greater commandments and there are least <laughs> or less commandments. And teaches men also shall also be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teach them shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So it means that even in heaven, there are least and there are what? Great. Now, think about it, Prince. How is it that someone will teach another person to break the law? Someone will call someone to sin. But somehow we are told that that person will be called least in heaven. The question is, how did that person even gain entrance into the kingdom of God in the first place? Where you are, I mean, asking of other people to be lawless. So that in my mind, the only way such a person could have would have been that probably a person one time felt that, no, what I'm doing is wrong. I need the spirit of God to cleanse me. The person asked for forgiveness of sins. And then the person was forgiven. And from, from that time on, the person lived a normal, Christian, less dutiful life in the kingdom. So he still gained entrance into the kingdom all right. They were able to enter in maybe the 1,200,000 and something earth people who entered into the, the kingdom. Those of us who are doing more will be the first, uh, part of the first 10 who enter in there. The point I am making is that when you come to sin also, I want to believe just as there will be um, classes in heaven, the greater in heaven, and then there will be the least in heaven. In hell too, some people will burn more than others, I, 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 I believe. At the end of the day, they will all burn, and the wind will blow their ashes. But I'm sure some may burn for just few hours, those who sin um, small, small, small sins, okay, like you want to call them. But those who also perform the heinous crimes, so that where lies the justice of God? If the person who only stole two fingers of, or, 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 or banana is actually going to bend the same way the person who killed, who, who, who did all of those things, they are all going to die the, the same way. Then I don't think there's any fairness in the judgment of God. And even human beings can be called fair or if you're unfairer than God, right? And that's why two weeks ago, when I was having a revival with, with, with my church, I told them that try to go to heaven, do your best to go to heaven. But even if you go to hell, make sure you perform small sins so that you're not burn for long. And the point is that we, we, we need to appreciate the sinfulness of sin, that sin is sin. And so we need to withdraw, we are all trying to be good by the grace of God. But let, let us work in a way that we would please God so we do not go. Now, my next question to you, you are getting too quiet on me, but I have a next question for you. Does God consider our motive when it comes to sin? You see, when you go to the law court, okay, they always look for motive behind the wrong thing done. Sin is sin. I mean, we understand 
you, you always look at the result, how it affects other people. So that sometimes you say, well, it, it doesn't care what you do, but it's about how it affects other people. So does God, do you think God actually consider our motive for doing the things that we do? Yes, let me go to Finley. Finley, what do you think? Does motive play any role in in the judgment of God, the way God judge us? I think it does. Okay. Because, um, you know, in certain circumstances, people do things not because they want to do it, mm -hmm. but because of the circumstance they find themselves. Okay. So I'm sure God actually considers the motive. Okay. Uh, uh, she, she says she's sure God actually considers it. Before I, I share my thoughts on that one, I have received a question from one of you. He says, I have been addicted to a particular sin of which I tried coming out of it. I've prayed and fasted, but I still find myself in it. As a Christian, what else can I do to overcome such sin? Yes. Phil. As, as from what the person is saying, one thing I get to understand is that we pray, but you don't get away from the thing. Okay. So we pray, and God will give us the power to overcome it. But we are closer to it, and it's keep on burning us like the fire. Mm. So you must first let it go away. Then he will give you the power not to go into it again. But if you pray that God should forgive you, and you still get closer to the thing, it will still let you to cause the same sin. Okay. Yeah, oh so Jesus in addressing this issue was like if your eye is going to prevent you from heaven mm -hmm. pluck it out mm -hmm. put it in fire and burn it mm -hmm. he didn't say pluck it out and put it somewhere that sometimes you see it and uh, my eyes are still important to me so let mm -hmm. me put it back mm -hmm. at the end of the day adding to what he said I feel sometimes Aside we live in the thing, the company that pushes us into doing those things, we still keep those company. And if you have friends that lead you to commit certain sins that you are trying to, and you still have this, this, the same friends, and yes, you want to move out of that, you can't. At the end of the day, the friends you have, the, the, the musics you listen to, uh -huh. the the things you watch on TV and on your phones and all those things, you should be able to filter all those things mm -hmm. so that at the end of the day, you are, in as much as you are trying to limit yourself from performing that sin, you are limiting the things that will draw you to that sin. I think if you limit the temptations, the ones you can limit, you'll be fine. Okay, so Ahini says you will be fine. Um, I want to say amen to the, 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 the finest. But you see, um, he, hearing them, what I see is that it looks like they are all trying to glean from uh, what Paul said in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 22, I believe, where he says, abstain from every appearance of evil, so that you need to detach yourself from the thing. But what if the thing is actually something within? How do you detach yourself from yourself. I don't know if you get the thing I'm saying so that you can say that if that particular, particular sin, which is not mentioned to us, is, um, let's say, um, put myself in a position where I can steal so that if I am an accountant and then I am closer to the money, I have access. So I need to maybe tell my boss that I want to go into the marketing department instead of the account so that I am away from the money. That is easy. But what if it is not a sin like that? Maybe what, 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 what is a, a sin of pride? How do you detach yourself from yourself. I, I, I don't know if you get the point I am making. And that is why um, this one is a very serious one. And you are not alone. There are other people who are struggling. And the reason why we are all struggling to feed you with a, a, a very good answer is that we don't know what particular sin it is. If we know 
if you were sim specific then we could have known how to help you so i i i would want to take a pause and ask if you can share your your, your contact with us i would want to personally link up with you so I see how I can help you. But don't feel that it is abnormal. In fact, Paul, the greatest apostle, apostle of all time, next to Christ himself, I believe, had a similar struggle. In Romans chapter 7, from verse 15 down through 25, he says, The good that I want to do, that I do not do. But the evil that I do not want to do, that is what I do. In verse 24, he was struggling so much that he says, Oh, wretched man that I am. I don't know if you're a woman. You can insert, Oh, wretched woman that I am. Who will save me from this bondage of sin? You understand? So, so Paul struggled. In fact, I think in 1 Corinthians, or is it 2 Corinthians chapter 12, from verse 7, he also had another a challenge. Okay, in fact, he calls it a messenger from Satan that God sent to buffet him. I mean, he prayed like you have been praying and you even added fasting. It's not going. Paul also did the same thing. Three times he asked God, but the thing did, did not go. All God will tell him is that my grace is sufficient in your weaknesses. So link up with us and then we will try and see how we can help you. We have just about five minutes to go. I think there was a question on the ground before I went to the, uh, the uh, that uh, motive, yes, and then Finley uh, actually agreed that, yes, our motives count. Yes, I believe motive counts. I believe motive counts. In fact, let me go to this um, statement of one of my favorite writers, um, E.G. White. She, she says in her book, Christ Object Lesson, page 316, second paragraph, um, it, 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 it's quite a long read, but pay attention to it. It says, the righteousness of Christ would not cover one cherished sin, deliberate sin. A man may be a lawbreaker in heart, yet if he commits no outward act of transgression, he may re be regarded by the world as possessing great integrity. What he's saying is that there are some people who come to church with their suits and huge Bibles and all of that, okay, with their long dresses. And I mean, they come, they are looking all fly for the Lord with a sovereign swag, okay. But then deep within their hearts, there are issues. But because we only see what is obvious to the eye, we may not be able to read the intents of the heart. She continues to say this, but God's law look into the secrets of the heart. Then this is where I have been driving to. He says, every act is judged by the motives that prompt it. Every act is judged. And, and you see, friends, that is why the only righteous judge is God. Because he's the one who is able to read within the intricacies, the microscopically, your actions, so that in church, someone would give a donation and it would be sinful. So that you ask, why? What could? I mean, we are trying to build the building. Okay, and then someone gave us thousand bags of cement and we are, hooray, this guy is a very kind man. He loves the work of God. That's what we have seen. But then God will take the divine microscope and put it on that person and it will be seen. That there are some viruses and it's not corona, but the virus is that he is eyeing the first eldership of that church so that based on that act, I mean, October will come, the nominating committee will meet, and then I know that by this action that I am doing, my name will come up. And what betides you, if he doesn't become the elder, that is at the end of his generosity. I don't know if, if you get the point I am making. So God is able to read the intents of the, 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 the heart. So it means that there are some good actions that people does that in the eyes of God, no, it is not. In the same way, there are some wrong things. I'm using the word wrong, not sin. There are some wrong deeds that people will do. It was out, born out of a good, I mean, a motive. Now, most of the time, I think this is a perfect way to uh, uh, end. We always talk about Uzzah, when he touched the yak. 
Now, usually I listen to sermons like um, how particular God is about what he says. And so we will judge that, well, um, God told him not to. And then he did. And so God killed him, took him out. Now we have no idea the motive that he had. Only God knows. Now God had the right to take him out no matter if it was born out of a good motive or out of a wrong motive because it is against the commandments. Now let's look at born out of a wrong motive. Probably wanted to make a name for himself so that when the chariot reached home he would be called the savior of the ark. That would be the title he will wear, the savior of the ark. So God knew that this is born out of, or what if it was out of a genuine heart that he was trying to. But then God so took him out because he wanted it to be an example for other people that I mean what I say and whatever I say, I mean it. So don't be surprised on him if you meet Uzzah in heaven. Then you may ask him, why are you here? Well, in my heart, I was actually trying to help, but God wanted me to be an example for you so that you will in future abide by every word of him. I don't know if you get the point I'm making. So you'll be surprised to meet some people, maybe our friend who is struggling with this sin, who sent the message to us. You may see him in heaven and you'll be like, ah, but you were doing all of these things, how are you here? And if you're able to ask that question, it means I would begin to wonder why you are there. Because God is the only righteous judge. Judge not that ye may not be judged. This has been Hope Bible School. Here, we study the Bible to understand what it means. And I'm glad that you joined us. We are not done. All the things that we have been trying to do, defining sin, trying to know what it is, we will sink in deeper next week. And we will go back to the Garden of Eden to look at what happened there, the consequences of the sin, how it affected nature, how it affected our first parents, how it, it, it has now affected us. And even, was there a consequence of sin for God himself? Yes, it is a question that we will try to answer next week on Hoop Bible School. Thank you for sharing with your friends. If you have any question, any contribution, any testimony, even as we close, you can share with us when we meet you next week. We would read it out for the world to hear. Bow for prayer. Father, we thank you for giving us such a wonderful discussion. The reason we want to know about sin is because we know that it is the problem of our world. The reason why we have poor leadership is because of sin. The reason why we have sickness is because of sin. The reason why we sin is because of sin. And so this evening, what we ask is that cleanse us. And everyone who is struggling with a sin that they know, especially our friend who sent us this message, even as we try to connect with him, send your spirit wherever he is and touch his life, mend his brokenness, and organize his life in a way that will be pleasing unto your sight. Let him have a testimony so that even as he has shared this issue with us, we will share to the world so that they would know that you are the God that heals us. Drive away the enemy from us so that all the evil suggestions that he is bringing to us we will take it away from our lives. Bless us, O Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.